Now today we're going to be talking about neural networks. If you haven't watched the other videos in my series, Deep Learning, go and watch them and come back. Those are important for what we're going to be doing in the upcoming videos and this one. So, a neural network is the heart of deep learning. It is what do actually does everything. So, gradient, we do use gradient descent to change the neural network. But we are not going to talk about that much today. Right. So, this is the com So, a common use for deep learning is digit recognition. Let's say you have a 10 by 10 grid. And this isn't 10 by 10, but you, let's say you have 10 by 10 grid and there's a handwritten digit. And it... It can be black and white or grayscale. If it's grayscale, then it'll be a bit more complicated, but let's go with black and white, which are zero, which is zero for black and one for white. So there will be a hundred neurons this way, because 10 times 10, hundred, that will contain values and And then it'll go through a mystery process, some mystery process into ten into ten cells. One for each digit. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or nine. So at the end, what you want, what is, what you really would, what you prefer, the best neural network is for whatever handwritten digit it is, for this case it's two, that would be white, one, and everything else would have a value zero. So everything would be black except two. So that is what you want at the end, but you have to go through a process to get that. Hence the hidden layer. With gradient descent, you keep on changing this hidden layer, but but we'll talk about that later. So let's say so you have a certain amount of neurons in each layer and then they have connections so there's a hundred weights or connections to the first one hundreds to second third and then fourth and then same thing here to the first one there's four second one there's four third one there's four and so on and it keeps on going like that until you get to the end so each of these neurons have a bias. So this one had so one ha this bias, 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 bias. But the everything that's connected has a certain number in that that changes the number, the value here as it goes along. And that, it will keep on changing it with the weights and biases until it shows the number over here. Now, these are called weights. So now we need, now we'll represent them. First, you have a 10 by 10 grid that has this. Now, for point one, all of the weights, it might have it will also be a 10 by 10 grid for the first one to represent all of the 100 because it's high, each of these points go to there. This one has four connections, one for each, and the second one is four connections and so on. So this will ha can have all, the, all the, will have all the weights 
which will change the number as it goes along, right? And then this to this one might ha will have a two by two grid because there's four, and then this one will have some can have some other grid that we can visually see, and then eventually it all comes down it all comes down to this this column at the end now to change it to, to keep on changing it you need a cost function we'll go into the weights and biases later and how they work in a different video but right now, we need to talk about the essentials. First, you need a network. And then you need, then you need the label data. I'll talk about that uh, right after I talk about the cost function. So that will tell you Depending on which ones are black and which ones are white and which ones are all different colors, what it is giving you. It's basically rating the computer's work and telling it what. To, so then we can tell the computer with gradient descent what to do to make it better. So if you have all random values, like completely it looks weird, then it will it's like utter trash you don't not you do not want that at all so the cost function lets you identify how trash it is or how bad it is now with the label data you need a lots and lots of different training examples like this but it also has to be labeled so you have the handwritten digit and then it tells, uh, then it ha it actually tells the computer what it is. This is the graph, and this is just a digit, so that it knows what the answer is. So then you can do the cost. So for two, it would be zero zero one zero zero continue and then zero. That's what you want. But here it might be one zero one one. Zero, one, one, and something weird. But then you subtract it to get the answer which you take an average of, and that's the cost. So you need la the label data to do this. This is the training data that you use to train your network. It has the handwritten digit and the answer to the handwritten digit. So it'll keep on using cost function and label data to keep on changing it to identify everyone's zeros through nine. It's just like babies. You can't just show it typed letters and expect it to be able to go on in the real world. Like, every one of you can read this. It's my hand, and it's zero through nine in my handwriting. But babies, if it's only been shown one kind of, of zero through nine, or one kind of ABC, then it won't be able to identify what else is also ABC. So you need to keep on showing it all the examples and then that will train the baby to understand what is what. That is basically what you're doing with the neural network except you have to change it so that a machine can read it. So that is the big, so that is the underlying concept of deep learning that is basically what you do i'll do it in more depth and depth in other videos so keep in tuned 
I'm Neil Kumar, and thanks for watching. And like, please like and subscribe. Thank you.